terrified to find out from somebody who would know. So let me welcome to the show the Attorney General for the great state of Washington, Rob McKenna. Mr. McKenna, thanks for your time this afternoon. Absolutely. Okay, I've been talking with a lot of my listeners about these school strikes, and I know that your office uh, issued a statement about the legality of school teacher strikes. So let's start with that. Are these strikes legal? No, they're not. No judge that has looked at the question, and there have been dozens that have looked, uh, has concluded that the strikes are legal. Uh, all right, we begin with some breaking news out of Kent. A King County judge has just ordered striking teachers back to work. The judge says the four-day strike is illegal. King 5's Linda Brill was in court at that, as that ruling was issued. She joins us now live with the details. So, Linda, how are teachers reacting? Well, teachers are not very happy about this. The judge made it very clear that, according to her, this strike is illegal, and she says that the strike is harming 26,000 children in Kent and their families. So, she says, they must stop their action. They must notify members of the union about her order. They have to report back to work, she says, on Tuesday, the day after Labor Day. Here is what the judge just said. Given that the law in this matter is clear, given that the law in this matter is clear, my order is that the defendants and all persons represented by the Kent Education Association are enjoined from engaging in, encouraging, or lending support or assistance of any nature to any work stoppage, slowdown, or strike of any kind against the district. deeply in the positions they've taken, and I respect that. But even if the teachers' union were completely and absolutely correct in all of their collective bargaining demands, they're wrong in their actions. In short, they are breaking the law. I am a role model. I am. I am their son or daughter's role model. And I am a fabulous teacher. <laughs> I mean, it's just a, what, what is that, about, so, about six-second sound bite? And those six seconds are like fingernails on a chalkboard to a lot of people who are emailing me saying, I cannot stand this woman. I mean, all you know is six seconds of her. But, you know, the criticism is what kind of role models are you to be out on strike? It's an illegal strike. Judge has ordered you back. You're still staying out there. Breaking the law is not an appropriate way to achieve the teacher's goals nor is it an appropriate way to demonstrate to their students a respect for our democracy or our justice system. It is undisputed that the teachers have each signed contracts with the Kent School District for the 2009-2010 school year, and those required them to begin teaching before today, and the strike is clearly in violation of those contracts. The law is absolutely clear. I wasn't exercising discretion. My reading of the law is that it's absolutely clear that teachers do not have a right to strike under Washington law. That is why I granted the school district's request for an injunction that the strike is unlawful, it's harming children, families, and non-teacher school employees. The longer the strike continues, the greater the degree of harm. As I noted previously, children who should be getting an education in the schools are not getting that education. Children who need special services the schools provide are not getting those services. Many families who depend on the schools for child care during regular school hours have to scramble to make alternative arrangements for care and supervision of their children. Seniors who plan to graduate next summer and who maybe have made or are in the process of making plans for college, plans to do things over the summer break next year, 
have very valid concerns about being able to graduate on a timely basis and follow whatever plans they have made for their summers, and not just the seniors, of course, but the other students and their parents and families as well. The non-teacher, the classified employees of the district may have no paychecks coming in while school is not in session, and they were counting on those paychecks to start at the time that the contracts indicated that they should start back toward the end of August. The truth is that court orders are meaningless unless they are enforced. A refusal to obey a court order is a sign of disrespect for our free institutions. It's a sign of disrespect for the court, which is the very institution of government that exists to protect the rights, the liberties, and access to justice for all people, regardless of their status, their wealth, or their background. <laughs> Frankly, it's a poor example to set for the young people who are looking to their teachers as role models on how to behave in a society that is founded on the rule of law. As Mr. Lynn pointed out, both pursuant to statute and pursuant to the court's inherent authority to enforce its orders, the court does have authority to enforce its orders. I would be disrespectful to our own institution of justice if I didn't take steps to enforce the order that I felt the law compelled me to make when we were last here. So, I will impose the following sanctions. The Kent Educational Association will be fined $1,500 per day, and the teachers who have defied the court order will be fined $200 a day for each day they violate their contracts and refuse to perform the duties they agreed to perform as teachers and violate the order of September 3rd, 2009. I would like the parties to return to negotiations and to continue those negotiations in good faith until an agreement is reached. Again, if a party is refusing to negotiate in good faith, there are procedures for dealing with that, uh, but this court's jurisdiction has not been invoked in that regard. It's time for everybody to start behaving like responsible adults who are acting in the best interests of the children who expect to attend school in the Kent School District. Hey. Oh I will suspend imposition of the fines until next Monday, the 14th of September, provided that as of that date, the teachers are prepared, available, and present to teach school, and that all other conditions of my previous order are complied with. If that means the teachers need to go into the schools tomorrow to prepare their classrooms, then that's what it means. If the teachers remain on strike, then the fines will be due and owing from the first day that the KEA deliberately chose to violate my order of September 3rd up to the date that the association and the teachers fully comply with that order. The fines are to be paid into the registry of the court. Uh, what ultimately will be done with those funds uh, can be the subject of another hearing at a later time. Uh, but it's very, very important that the rule of law be complied with. I know it's very important to all of you that the kids be in school, that they be educated, that they be provided the services that they need to be provided with. And I'm sure that if the parties continue to negotiate in good faith, you will be able to come to some kind of resolution, which perhaps will not be the ideal in the mind of either side, but will be a process that you can live with and that will allow everyone to do their jobs and allow our children to get the education that they need and that they're entitled to under our state constitution.